hello and welcome back. For this video, I want to go more into this rectangular array command, the polar array command, and also the, if you use the click down, the path array. These are all associated and located under that rectangular array command. So once you have this rectangular array command, there are other things that you can do to edit. You can change the base point. You can even change the levels. That was not covered in the previous video. So here, we're gonna cover that information. Remember to like and subscribe to the video and you will be updated and be a part of been having the option to watch more videos as they're uploaded in regards to AutoCAD. So first I'm gonna click on my array here. And in doing so, we get our box again. We have our columns, our rows, and then we also have that spacing in between each of these. Remember, if we wanna change our columns or rows, we can do so up here. Notice now we have five more co five columns, and then we're gonna say five rows. Pressing enter, we're all set. And then again, we can also change our spacing in between our rows and columns. Oh, I didn't wanna go half inch. I got weird fingers right now. I'm gonna spread these all the way out. Make that even, oh, I said one inch and one foot on one side, but I want them to be even. So now I brought them closer together. So putting in that information where it says between gives you that distance between each column and then also each row. Another item that I wanna address here is where it says levels. So right now we have one level, but if I was to change this one level to four, nothing happens, so it appears. But that's because we're in a 2D view. So if you're ever needing to create layers for whatever it is you're doing, you will put this levels in up top, but you would go over here to your compass and then begin to rotate. And notice now that you have four layers, one, two, three, four. And if I just kind of tilt this a little more, maybe on an angle there, pivot that, you can see the four layers in here. When you're all set and you want to perfect um, your spacing, then from there, you will make those changes, see it in that 3D view, and you're all set. The only thing that you need to do to come back to a 2D view is to go back to your compass, move it around and click on the word top, and it'll bring it back to a flat 2D view. And I just simply changed my spacing and it brought it back to what I had it as originally. Now, right now I can move my drawing all over from that base point where I just clicked from, right? But if I wanna change the position and the place where I move and I stretch things, then I would go to where it says, let me click back into that command, go back to where it says base point. The base point redefines the base point of the array. So once I left click on it, this was my original base point and now I can move it to wherever I want it to be. Let's say that one of my base point here. So now I can move from this base point. I'm gonna turn on my ortho. So that's the relocation of that base point. Again, when you are ready to come out of any of these rectangular array commands, you can just click on the word close array and you're back to your home screen, or you can press escape. 
The next command that we can cover is called the polar array command. It evenly distributes objects, copies, and circular pattern around a center point or axis of rotation. So what I'm going to do is kind of pick up my rectangular array and I'm just going to just move it over. Zoom out, zoom in so that I only have a piece of that object in my screen view. And then I'm going to take something like a circle and just, just drop it on my screen. No particular size at all. I want to also move my circle, or excuse me, my octagon shape to the quadrant. And I am going to use my polar array command so that this shape is distributed evenly around this circle. So what I would do to do so is I would go to my, so your default for AutoCAD is on rectangular array. You will need to go to the drop down, select polar array, and then select the objects. I'm gonna select the first object and then the second as well. From here, I will simply press enter and then when it says specify the center point of the array, or if you know the base point, I'm just going to go to the center of my circle, left click release, and then now we have this shape distributed around my circle. The default will be that there are six items. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is perfect. And then we have one row because there's only a one circle with these shapes around it. So this is good if you are creating something like a conference table, a dining room table, or any type of table seating with seating, you can create not only the shape of the table, draw a chair or pull a chair design in one time, and then you can use the array command to duplicate it around the table or object evenly, creating flowers or anything of that nature, or shapes where this needs to have a pattern repeated around another object. You can always come up to the top and do the same thing, create spacings. So if I type in, oh, I don't wanna type in 45. If I wanna go back and select this again, I kind of got ahead of myself. I'm gonna go back to my polar array command, select my objects, press enter. Again, specify my base point off the center. And then this, pop, this box appears. And I wanted to change my quantity to another number, let's say eight you will notice that now there are eight shapes around the circle and then again, the distance changes and the fill is 30, 360. So it's letting me know that with eight of these, it made it around this 365 degree circle because that's what a circle is. It made it around 360. And they're 45 apart at 45 angles apart from each other. Again, you can use your base point to stretch, change, or whatever you need to do, like selecting your grippers. And then it will be the same thing. We wanna keep it associative. And if you wanna move your base point from here to another location, you can do so. So now you can pull from the center or from this side of that octagon shape up above. And once again, just like with anything else, you can go ahead and also close the array by checking the close box, or you can press escape. 
The next thing that I want to bring your attention to again is the rows column. So if I want to change this to two rows, look what happens. It duplicate Kate's. Let's move this out of our way here. It duplicates that original circle with the one shape attached to it. But we do have two rows, one and two. If we want to only have this, whereas, and that's because we selected both objects to polar array. But if I want to go back, put that back on there, and I'm going to select polar array, and I'm going to select the object. You don't have to select your table to duplicate. Maybe it's only that side object that's attaching it that you want to duplicate. And when I say circle, I'm referring, or table, I'm referring to that circle. So you're selecting one object, pressing enter, and then again, finding a center point, and we're back here. Let's go ahead and put in the same numbers. We chose to have eight of these. Notice when we change that eight, let's go back to where it was originally. For your items here, it was six as a default. And notice that the distance was 60 degrees and the fill was 360 degrees. Whatever you do to the between and the fill box, that angle again changes or it plays off of what each box says for each other. So when we change it to eight, in order for it to fit eight of these shapes around this circle, they have to be 45 degrees between them and they're filling a circle at or distance between the last array is 360. But now when we go and change our rows, to let's see three now we have three rows of the original shape that we chose to array because we only selected one object in the beginning or that second time around in showing this example and now we're just arraying or copying or duplicating this object and this is where you go in and you put in your spacing between the shapes. So we have three rows. I'm changing the spacing for them to a half inch, and now they come in closer. If I want to change it to a quarter of an inch, they come in even closer. I'm going to show that again. So if you only want to array or copy and duplicate just the outside object, you would choose your polar array command. Select that object, right click or press enter, and in your command bar it says specify the center point. Well, we want it to go around this circle, so we're just going to go off the center of the circle. Left click. That default of six pops up six items. There's three on this side and three over here. We decided to change it to eight for the example, or I can do 10. When I change it to 10, if that circle is not large enough to fit them on there, is they're gonna be crammed. It'll tell you that and show you. However, once they're able to fit on and, they're, and it has been worked out, it would tell you that the distance is 36 degrees of that angle and 360 of the angle from the first shape that you selected. And then also, if you want to add more rows, you just change your row count to two, and then you can change your spacing in between them by clicking on the between and typing in that measurement. Just like any other command that we have discussed thus far, in this array command, you can always choose to close again that array 
or press escape to come out of the command. Now that we are out of the array command, I'm going to scroll out, reposition my screen here. And I want to bring to your attention that when I click on my shape, again, this comes up and I can exit out that box come up where we can make changes and do any editing and the same here. When I click on that one, I use the rectangular array command. This comes up where I can make changes. Escape out. Notice that if I hover over the circle, nothing comes up when I click it because this was not a part of the polar array. I only, in that second time around, selected the shape. So only the shape was duplicated and created to make the polar array. If I choose to go to my explode and I wanna separate these out, these lines, I can select explode, hover over the shape and press enter. And now all of these are separated. Let's look at that again. Go undo. When I click on, oh, I'm gonna undo again. When I click and hover over one of the shapes, they all populate and brighten. And they all turn blue, and I get my box, my rake box to make any changes. If I want to separate them and make changes to them individually, I no longer want them to be a polar array. I would just go to my explode command, select one of them. They're all populate, but I just need to select one and then press enter. And now they are all separate. So now I can no longer click on them. As you see, I'm clicking. There's no array box opening at the top of my screen because they're no longer a part of an array. They are all separated individually. And I can press enter to come out or I can scroll out and continue to click on these individually. Now I can move them, you know, individually as one or I mean, if I have all of them together or if I wanna do this individually to make a change but I can't make the change to them all at once because again, I have separated them from the array. I will do the same here. You can do the same in rectangular. Again, if I click on one or one spot, it all populates together the entire array that was created. My box come up where I can make all of those changes. However, if I wanted to separate them and I no longer needed them or I wanted to make whatever changes, I can go to explode, hover over an area, press enter, and now everything is separate and ha is its own. And I can even go through and say, hey, these are the changes I wanna make. I wanna move this one out because I wanna put a different shape in. I use my move command, I can do so. Now remember I had these layers on top of each other, so they kind of doubled. But they no longer function as an array, as one unit, because you see that they were exploded and separated and I'm not getting that edit bar at the top of my screen. The last command that I'm gonna cover with you is called the path array. It is the second in the drop down from the rectangular array command. And this path array evenly distributes object copies along a path or a portion of a path. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and zoom out and create a new space over to the side here. Oh, 
didn't want to draw that. What I want to draw here is first a straight line in my drawing space. So excuse me, just doing some extra clipping around. Stretch this line out a little bit. Give me some distance. And then I'm going to do a rectangle just there. And what I'm going to do is now select my rectangle and evenly distribute it just across this line and create multiple rectangles, just as we did for the other array commands. First, I would need to go to the drop down, select path array, and I'm going to select the object. And then it now tells me in my command bar at the bottom, after I press enter, select the path curve. Now we can do this with the curve. I will show that in a moment, but I'm just going to show you with the straight line. So right now I'm going to select the line. And in doing so, it duplicates this across as if it is going across this line. It's not touching it, but I will show you the same thing if it's if it was touching the line. My rectangle. Just draw a straight line. Select my path array. Select the object. Select the curve or this line. And there you go. It duplicates. And it's directly on the line because it was already connected to the path. The object was the triangle it, and the path was here but the object or triangle here was connected to this line and then it ran it straight across. So now if I want to draw a curve, zoom out, come back into another space here, or I could use my pen. I'm gonna go and draw that curve line. I'm gonna use a spleen command. Let me turn off my ortho. And you can draw your shape first, or you can draw your path first when you're sampling this out or creating it. Make that pretty dramatic there. Press enter to come out of that command. And then from here, I'm gonna select a rectangle command here. Go to the edge of that spleen line of the endpoint. Let's turn that ortho on to make sure that my rectangle is straight. Soon I turn that on, now I'm going to go back to the command and grab that endpoint again. And then from here, I can use my polar array command to evenly distribute this shape along my curved path, like so. Select the command. Select your object or objects, press enter or right click, choose the path, and voila. Notice, again, just like the other or previous array commands, rectangular and polar, we get this box again. It's the array creation box. In this first box where it says items, we can't change the number. Notice that it is not populated. It is distorted, so we can't select that one as of yet. Right now, we can change the distance in between these items. Okay. Or, I'm going to go back in there and do the command again, leaving it at its default. We can always go to the rows and change our rows if we like from one to two. And notice that it's two rows on for each one. So before when it was just one, we can add two or even four. And notice how they stack or they're with each other. And then from there, you can change your distance between them Now they're going to spread apart 
If I scroll out of my drawing, they're all up at top. Or whatever that distance is that you want. Change that row back to four. Or to one. There we go. And then there are other items that we can begin to change as well. If we want to change this first col column, we will need to click on where it says measure. And then you want to go to divide. And now you can see that this number eight is allowing us to make the change. We're going to divide, let's say, four of these evenly across this spleen line. And now it drops down to one, two, three, four. And then from there, we can choose to make any other changes as well. Maybe we want to have 10 of them distributed evenly across the spleen line. Now, something like this is good for when you're creating stairs and you are drawing and you know your rise over your run or when you're creating spiral steps in a space and you wanna go ahead and put those footings in, then you will cut to kind of um, cut them off where they need to be. So the polar array command has a lot of options. Remember, hovering over the actual object will bring you back into the creation zone where you can do the edits. Clicking on the actual path or the spleen will not bring up the array creation because this is not the item that you arrayed. You must click on the actual object that you arrayed. Along with this path array command, there are other options for you. Again, you can remove where the base point is, and you can also align these items as well. If I click align, notice how they change position. So align item specifies whether to align each item to be a tangent to the path direction. Alignment is relative to the orientation of the first item. So right now, when we went ahead and arrayed these and it distributed the rectangles evenly across the spleen, notice that they're kind of going up and not flat as the original one. When we choose to select a line, all of these should fall and go in the same direction left and right as the original. Let's see. Now they all have changed that direction or aligned to the first object that was created. Press it again to bring it back, or we can keep it aligned. Again, you have things that you can edit and begin to play around with under particular circumstances. Again, you can choose to close the array by selecting close array or that wonderful escape key. I hope this video has displayed everything that you will find in that array command. Again, remember we went over rectangular array and when you click the drop down, you have path array and also polar array. All of these commands will be very useful as you continue to work in AutoCAD and create residential or even commercial floor plans in the AutoCAD program. You can use them in a plethora of situations. Again, for creating tables and chairs, for creating tile, steps, and many other items that has to do with furniture placement in both residential and commercial. Remember to continue to subscribe or a like and give this video a thumbs up so that we can continue to get those notifications or you're in when the new AutoCAD videos are posted.